Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Mottisfont in Hampshire. It's between Bromsey and Stockbridge and we're going to be doing a roughly a three and a half mile circular route around the Mottisfont estate. And we'll be looking at some woodland, some lovely meadows, uh, a river and have a uh, pass through a couple of villages as well. In fact, we're going to be following uh, a walk that's in uh, Vicky Fletcher's book, uh, Hampshire and the New Forest, A Dog Walker's Guide. I'll put the uh, route up on screen. So do join us. Well, I parked my car at the National Trust car park at uh, Spiriwell. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Fortunately, there's a map in the car park. So let me just show you where we're going to be going and uh, here we are so we are here so we're going to go into some woods and this is all the way through woodland um, I think we're actually going to follow this little track here and then there's a footpath that crosses a field and this is carrying on heading south all the way here underneath the railway line and then we'll have a look at the river and then along this track here, across meadows, across the railway line again, across the road, another path across fields, have a little look at Mottisfont, and then finally another track again across fields, back to the car park. And we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. See, look, there's a little note here, somebody lost their Italian greyhound a couple of days ago in the area, so, well, We'll keep our ears peeled. Right, okay. We're gonna kick off into these woods. So I'm starting off by heading westwards into some woods. It's quite a dull day. I'm filming in the middle of June. There was a bit of a mist this morning, but the sun is up there. Hopefully it'll burn off and we'll get brighter as the morning goes on. Oh, a pleasant little woodland area to start off with and oh just Turning around here, I can see, looks like an old boundary bank. <laughs> it's a bit like being back in the new forest. But, uh, yeah, it's quite atmospheric in here, actually. Now, the National Trust acquired the Mottisfont estate from a Mrs. Maud Russell back in 1957. And it included a mansion house, gardens, woods and rivers. But, over 1,600 acres in total. And, uh, well, the land's been managed as a traditional working estate since the 1500s. And today, well, the estate team at Mottisfont manages 5,500 acres. It's quite pretty in here. Oh, we've got a scratch. <laughs> And uh, extraordinary some of the trees in here. Uh, it looks as though every single one, virtually, is covered head to foot with ivy climbing up. Isn't that extraordinary? And uh, just panning over to the right, there's loads of foxgloves in here. I think this really is one of those traditionally managed woodlands. Thankfully they've got uh, some way markers in here so we're not going to get lost. Oh, another little boundary bank there. I think we're probably in a place called Culver Lees along here. I say the woods really are 
actively managed. There's some pretty wide rides to allow sunlight into the woods, which of course that makes it a perfect habitat for for butterflies. And I did read somewhere that silver washed flotillary and white admiral love it here. Not that I'm an expert on butterflies or anything. Well, I'm still working my way through the woods, but from time to time you get these little uh, areas of open land. Oh, look at these foxgloves. It's been such a, a good spring and early summer for, for foxgloves, that's for sure. I'm just looking out here. Now, I don't know if it's coming across on screen, but there's this sort of real atmospheric mist that's just gradually beginning to rise. It's still quite early, just quarter past eight. And uh, there's not a soul around here, so it's very quiet and peaceful. It's lovely. Oh, there's another sign about this missing dog. I did, um, we did come across somebody uh, just a few minutes ago on the track. They're still out looking, been missing for two days. And uh, there was a sighting uh, yesterday, apparently, but uh, quite sad. Hopefully they do find it. Right, so we're going to come out of the wood now and cross this little bridge here. And things are going to brighten up as we come out the wood. And we're now going to cross a field of looks like maize and head out towards that gap in the hedge right at the bottom. Still a little bit of a mist around, but it's perhaps showing signs of lifting soon. It does make it much more atmospheric to walk. And it is so mild. I mean, I'm in shirt sleeves still. So it's a lovely temperature to be walking. We'll continue to head south, just alongside a, a little bit of woodland and on my right, which is the sort of western side, there's a, a lovely open area which I'll turn around and show you. Beginning to brighten up now with some gorgeous meadow land. And there underneath this branch, you can spot the woods that we've just come out of. But, uh, quite stunning. Now, from time to time, <laughs> we keep coming across these painted stones. I don't know if you can see one there. That looks a bit a bit scary, that one. Because that's this latest craze of leaving these stones everywhere. I think the idea is that you're supposed to either pick it up, or rehide it, or do something with it, but I don't know. <laughs> with, um, with COVID-19 about, I think I'll leave it alone. Over we go. Oops. Oh, blimey. <laughs> this looks a bit rickety. Right. Oh, a little bridge here. And we're going to go under the railway line now. And that's the main railway line from uh, Bristol that goes all the way to Southampton. I'll work our way through here as I echo away. And uh, this should take us out close to the, the river Dun. More crumbs. Some rabbits through there, which uh, my companion has just spotted. <laughs> Fortunately for them, there's a big gate in the way. And here we come to the river Dun. It's looking very serene and peaceful this morning. Isn't that lovely. Oh, and just as I pan round, the sun comes out and we get some lovely reflections in the water there. Now this river, well, it rises in Wiltshire to the southeast of Salisbury near West Grinstead and basically flows eastwards into Hampshire. It eventually joins up with the River Test at Kimbridge and then flows out into the Solent. But, oh, isn't that lovely? Not, uh, not quite as clear as some of the chalk streams that we've seen recently, but um, still very pretty nonetheless. I love the way the, 
the river bank just seems to meld into the the side of the, the water. Wow. Isn't that beautiful. Right, can't stay here all day. delighted to say the sun has now come out in all its glory which is great so we're now heading eastwards I've got the bank of the the river Dun to my right and we're going through this uh, lovely meadow that I'm guessing probably is uh, a water meadow floods in the winter and it's just left to uh, allow wildflowers. I'm afraid I'm not an expert on those, so I can't tell you what most of these are. But it really is quite beautiful now. Lovely little path here. Oh wow, what have we got here? Now I'm not an expert on flowers. I think that's a yellow iris, isn't it? I think so. But you've got quite a diverse a uh, range of wildflowers along here. And it's so peaceful. It really is. And, uh, now with the sun out it's quite nice to um, have this little shady bit. Well, it really is quite glorious now. So 45 minutes ago it was quite dull and misty. Oh, look at this lovely cottage thatch behind me with the uh, those little wild roses in front. Stunning. And uh, now that the sun is out we're going to start to see some terrific views going forward. Well, we're just about to cross the railway line for the second time but we're going to go, as you can hear a train go by. Thank you. <laughs> we're going to go over the railway line rather than under it. Now we've just seen this uh, terrific roe deer. It just came out onto this field here. It was pointless me um, pointing the GoPro at it because the zoom on that's terrible. So I grabbed the camera, used the zoom on that and I've taken some photos. Hopefully they'll come out okay. I'll put them up on screen. Um, it was a lovely uh, row buck and it did about <laughs> two circuits of this field. Thankfully Logan was on a lead at the time. Okay so we are now going to head over the railway line so that humming noise you can hear is obviously that uh, electricity uh, station there. And here we go. Stop, look and listen. That's the uh, Dunbridge railway station there which will see shortly. Definitely nothing coming that way. Over we go. <laughs> I'm going to keep a lookout because apparently this is where um, that little dog was last seen. Well, there's a train in the far distance pulling out of the platform. Uh, this is sad. When we were speaking to that person about that lost dog we saw earlier, they did say look out for this. They've put till the owner has put down um, an article of their clothing and a few treats, hoping that uh, the dog will, will make its way back there. But um, oh, I'll have to look up on the internet and keep looking out for that. Trouble is, it's been two days now. 
a long time, isn't it? Okay, well, we're continuing to head eastwards and we're going to pass the little village of uh, Dunbridge. We won't have a look in there. It's got its own little railway station and a pub, which is called the, uh, the Mill Arms. It's a 19th century Victorian inn, formerly a coaching inn, I believe, named not after a mill, funnily enough, although there is a mill nearby, but after a chap called Sir John Barker Mill, who was the owner of the Mottisfont estate in the um, early 19th century. And uh, I did read that two former presidents of the United States of America, Bush and Carter, both have stayed uh, in that pub when they were fishing in the area. We're now heading uh, northeast towards Mottisfont, having left uh, Dunbridge. And it really is quite beautiful here, making our way through a footpath, through a field of wheat. And summer really is here now. Isn't that glorious? It, uh, No expert on crops, but they look to be in good order. Yeah, beautiful. And I'm getting some great views from, from up here. I'm just coming into the outskirts of the village of Mottisfont now, and just come across this lovely, what's called a Millennium Orchard. There is a little display board by it. Let's have a look through here. Isn't this so pretty? And uh, what do we got here? Ah, yes, this is the, it's called the Twelve. It's a sculpture created from the stakes of old river boarding, which has been eroded and worn away by the flow of the river, revealing beautiful grain patterns. And then, just coming through here, it is indeed an orchard with apple trees wild uh, daisies oh wow look over here some red poppies and then intertwined with some blue cornflower I think those are yep oh the bees are really loving this wow wasn't that little orchard pretty well we're now just going to go through Mottisfont it's not very big what a, a small little almost a hamlet really and a uh, lovely building to my left. Now this used to be a pub called The Fox and funnily enough it has a fox as a door knocker. But, uh, there used to be a, a few pubs in the village but uh, in 1920 they were all closed down by the then owner of the estate. Well, we're now right by the, well, one of the back entrances as it were to uh, the Mottisfont house. We're not going to go in because uh, well it, it, you have to pay to go in right by the side of a busy road so apologies if you hear some traffic but we can see the lodge here and uh, what I'll do is just tell you a little bit about uh, the place. There, there was an original Augustine priory established here in 1201 by a chap called William Breawear I think it's called um, and he was a trusted advisor for Richard the Lionheart, King George and Henry III and he was one of the barons actually who signed the Magna Carta but during the dissolution of monasteries what was that 1536 to 1541 under Henry VIII the priory was converted to a house but it wasn't demolished as such although in the 18th century the old monastic cloisters and Tudor courtyard were demolished but uh, as I mentioned before it was gifted to the National Trust in 1957 and uh, as well as the house there's some there's a terrific walled rose garden which is well worth looking at 
Um, dogs can go in, but they're not allowed in the house or in the wall garden or on the lawn, so it is a bit restricted. But uh, no, it's, it's a super place to go, but obviously you have to pay to get in. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or a like and a comment. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We thought we'd do our end piece in the Millennium Orchard in Mottisfont. It really is quite delightful here. We've had a super walk today. Started off very atmospheric with the mist, but the sun eventually came out and it has been a quite glorious day. So, <laughs> we're off for a, a cup of tea somewhere. Until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Mm -hmm.